Next on KNX, It Pays to be Ignorant, followed by Maisie. The flavor's all yours when you call for Philip Morris. Clean, fresh, pure. America's finest cigarette. What is a misleading figure? A woman with a girdle on. Correct. Pay the man nine dollars. What is a half breed? A man who breathes through one nostril. Correct. Pay the man nine dollars because it pays to be ignorant. Presented by Philip Morris Cigarettes and Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes Johnny. Johnny with an invitation to try Philip Morris. So clean, so fresh, so pure. America's finest cigarette. Thank you, Johnny, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Friday night, another session of that quiz program that became an institution with a board of experts who belong in one. First, first we have to celebrate author Mr. Harry McNaughton, who has just written a book entitled Marriage in Mexico, or Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby. <laughs> but here he is, Mr. Harry McNaughton. Thank you. I, I have a poem, Mr. Howard. Yeah, I expected that. Yes. An Eskimo sleeps in his white bear skin and sleeps very well, I'm told. Last night I slept in my white bear skin. And I'm telling you, brother, it was cold. <laughs> you know, you know that I got goose pimples on my goose pimples? Okay, yes. fine. All right, all right. Next we have a man. Next we have a man who the day he was born... Or shortly after, his mother had to buy him back from the dog catchers three times. A man who was sent home for the second grade for not shaving, Mr. George Shelton. You know, I was up to my Uncle Webfoot's farm last week, Mr. Howard. I see. And, and as I was looking around the farm, two rabbits dashed by. I see. They were being chased by about ten dogs. I see. And as they got close to me, one of the rabbits said to the other, Let's stop here for a minute, and we'll outnumber them. I see. <laughs> That's very nice. Due to illness, Miss McCown is unable to be with us this evening, but in our place, we are happy to have with us one of America's most beloved personalities, who has graciously offered to pinch hit for Miss McConnell. That generous and warm-hearted lady is none other than Kate Smith. Uh, Miss Smith, hmm? don't you think Mr. Howard is a very cheerful chap? Yes, I do, Mr. McNaughton. And don't you think he's generous? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about his being generous. Uh, wh why do you say that? Well, one day he came into the soda fountain where I was with a few girlfriends of mine, and he said, Well, girls, what are we going to have, rain or snow? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Miss Smith. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, I see. Now, let's get on. Let's get on here with the first question. Yes. And see how we can make out with it. I've just introduced the experts to you folks, so sue me. My lawyer's name is Engelman. Here is the first question for this evening. Mike. Where is the game of ice hockey played? On a tennis court, a pool table, or on ice? Well, that's an easy question. Do you know the answer, Miss Smith? <laughs> Not that easy. I see. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Howard, would you mind repeating the question? Where is the... <laughs> Where is the game of hockey played on a tennis court, a pool table, or on ice? I used to play hockey when I went to school. 
You played hockey in school? Yeah, the truant officer was always after me. <laughs> That's hooky, Mr. Sheldon. It is? Yeah. Mr. Howard, uh, Mr. Howard, did you hear about the fellow who took his girl into a pawn shop? Why? He wanted to get her alone. Alone? <laughs> Oh, I'm incorrigible tonight. <laughs> you, you'll get used to me, Miss Smith. Do I have to? <laughs> Do you know where hockey is played, Miss Smith? Sure, in Madison Square Garden. I know that, but what's on the floor? The hockey players. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Miss Smith, I'm beginning to think you're related to Miss McConnell. Look, the question, the question is about sports. Well, just what do you mean by that remark, Mr. Howard? Why don't you slap his face, Miss Smith? Where is it? <laughs> oh. oh, that's a good question. Who sent that in? <laughs> As I... <laughs> yes, that's a good one. As I said, the question is about sports. What's your favorite outdoor sport, Miss Smith? Ice skating. Ice skating. Well, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Tell me, can you make the figure eight? Why, sure. And I can do it the hard way. Mm -hmm. Two fours. That, that is hard <laughs> What's your favorite sport, Mr. McNaughton? Uh, tiddlywinks. You play tiddlywinks? Yeah. Mike, what position? Uh, left tiddly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awfully ah, jolly. Yeah. That, that got a nice tiddle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McNaughton, please, when better heads are made, try and get one. Yes. Look, let me help you with a question. The sport I'm talking about is played on skates. What kind of skates? All right, ice skate. Oh, you know, the last time I went skating, I tried to make a figure for hours. What happened? She slapped my face. I see. <laughs> you know, Mr. Howard, I was president of an ice skating club once, but I resigned. Yeah, why'd you resign? I just couldn't keep my end up. You're at... <laughs> I bet you were a gay old blade, Harry. All right, <laughs> please, come and get on with the question. I'll never forget the first time I tried to skate. I took an awful tumble. Yeah, did the people laugh? No, but the ice made some funny cracks. <laughs> Suppose you step in here and find these three characters, will you please? Certainly, Mr. Howard. I will find them 202 Philip Morris cigarettes, which I'll give to this lady in the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here's the next question. What state is mentioned in the title of the picture, California? <laughs> in the picture? That's right. The Why, any four-year-old child could answer that. Uh -huh. Yeah, but where are you going to get a four-year-old child at this hour? Well, what, I, what I mean is I can answer the question. Now, just a minute, Miss Smith. Give someone else a chance. What are you trying to do? Make me look stupid? Certainly not. Nature already saved me the trouble. I... <laughs> no, I don't care who answers the question. You don't? No, I don't. Then you answer it. Lock. Yeah. yeah. I am not here to answer questions. Well, what are you here for? You know, I was wondering about that myself, sure. Mr. Shelton. Yeah. The question is, what state is mentioned in the title of the picture, California? Mr. Howard, could you tell me what the title of the picture is? Yeah. <laughs> That's the title of the picture, California. And you want to know what state is mentioned in the title? Am I right? You are right. Hey, you see, I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And let's go on to the next question. Oh, uh, wait a minute. You haven't answered this question yet. Miss Smith, did you see California? Yes, I did, and I call it pretty good, too. You call it pretty good? Mm -hmm. Then who called it California? I uh, play. <laughs> Mr. Sheldon, when you wake up in the morning, don't you regret it? Let's get on with the question here. Please. We did that if I were you. Now, now, Mr. Howard, just a moment, old boy, just a moment. I want to butt in here. Is the title of the picture Pretty Good or California? Yeah, that's what we mean. Please, Miss Smith was just using a figure of speech. Did you say figure, Mr. Howard? Yes. Yes, sir, and don't let me hear any cracks about it out of you. <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> Can we get back to the question? What state is mentioned in the title of the picture California? Miss Smith. You were in the movies. Yes, that was some time ago. Uh -huh. Tell me, Miss Smith, did you know Tyrone Power? Mm -hmm, no. But I know his brother, Will Power. Will Power. Oh, boy, <laughs> Will Power. Uh, that's She's ridiculous. getting as ridiculous as he is. Yeah, yeah, I just... It's the truth. That's what I get for associating with you two. Yes, <laughs> Beth. I'm really surprised at you. I'm surprised at myself. <laughs> 
don't. <laughs> I, I like, I like Cary Graham. Who don't? <laughs> wait, wait a minute, who's he? Who's he? Yeah, that was my question. Who's on third? <laughs> Why, he's got all the beautiful women in Hollywood running after him. So what? What's he got that I haven't got? <laughs> all the beautiful women in Hollywood. <laughs> Step in here and find these three duds, will you please? Plainly, Mr. Hart, I'll find them 203 Philip Morris cigarettes, which I'll give to this gentleman in the audience. Thank you. Well, Ken, how about having Ray Porter's Esquire sing something for us at this point? Well, they're right here, Tom, waiting with a brand new arrangement of one of the bright tunes from the new Broadway hit, Finnegan's Rainbow, on that great come and get a day. God. On that great come and get a day. Want to be fun when worry is done and money is paid. That's the time things will come your way. On that great, great come and get it day, I'll get my gal, that calico gal, I'll get my mule, that acre of ground, cause word has come from Gabriel's horn, the earth beneath your plow is abundant, now it's your glory times coming for to stay. On that great, great, come and get it day. Come and get it, come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. What a day with banjos ringing, what a day for people in overalls. Can't you hear all the angels singing? Come and get your gravy and your two meatballs. Come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. Come and get it, come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. Come and get it, come and get it. Bells will ring from every steeple, come and get it. It stands to reason that whatever cigarette you smoke, that cigarette, in your opinion, is a good cigarette. Otherwise, you just wouldn't smoke it. That's why this challenge, this friendly challenge, is for you. Try Philip Morris and test Philip Morris against the cigarette you are now smoking. Test it for taste and notice the taste. So clean, so fresh, so pure, that makes Philip Morris so good to smoke. Test it for flavor. And notice the rich, natural flavor in Philip Morris that comes of the world's finest tobaccos. Test it for pleasure. Pure, smoking pleasure. And notice how Philip Morris brings you those easy moments of perfect relaxation. Yes, you be the judge. Match Philip Morris with the cigarette you are now smoking. Compare critically for taste, for flavor, for smoking pleasure. We believe that you, too, will call for Philip Morris because you, too, will agree that Philip Morris is America's finest cigarette. Always better, better, always. Nice work, Ken. It's marvelous how those words flow from your mouth. Well, thank you, Tom. And now who's our first contestant this evening? Well, we have a very nice young man coming to the microphone, Mr. Howard, a Mr. Stewart. Oh, thank you. Mr. Stewart, and thank you for coming up. How are you this evening? Fine, thank you. Where are you from, would you care to tell us? Indiana, Pennsylvania. Indiana. Indiana, Pennsylvania? Well, make me a politician and call me influence. I see. Are you... Are you... Are you still white in that town? Look out your crack of tonsil. No, Just that's right. Him, I, I, I was a farmer in a candy factory. You, uh, you were a farmer in a candy factory? I used to milk chocolates. <laughs> All right, please. So, uh, so you're from Indiana, Pennsylvania, Mr. Stewart. Is yes, that right? Yes, I am. Uh, strangely, I knew some people uh, that lived in Indiana. I knew a man by the name of Stewart that used to run a hardware store. Did you know him? No, uh, hardware store, yes. Yes, you knew him? Yes, I was related to him by marriage. 
Oh, you were? Uh, what, a uh, brother-in-law or something? Oh, it was my father. Oh, I see. Well, isn't that a coincidence? A blood relation. Blood relation. Yeah. Why don't you try to borrow some? I... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shaw. That's all right. Not at all. I see. You know, I thought your face looked familiar, Mr. Stewart. So right. you're old Alec Stewart's son. That's right. Isn't that marvelous? Well, give Alec my regards the next time you see him. I will sure you? will. Yes, Thanks I'll appreciate that. It certainly is. What do you work at? Are you in the hardware business, Mr. Stewart? <laughs> what do you do? What I, do you work at? I'm an actor. I... Oh, an actor? Mm-hmm. You mean like... Uh, in the theater or the movies? Or? No, no, I, I, I work in the movies. Oh, yes? Have you ever made any pictures? <laughs> uh, yeah, a few. Uh, a few? Well, of all the blockheads. Mr. Howard, that's Jimmy Stewart. I know that. Alex Stewart's son. I know that. <laughs> no, he's well. No, he's father. Mr. Howard, everybody knows Jimmy Stewart. Certainly. I even know him. I've seen him in the movies. Sure. That's the fellow that says to the girl, I love you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Come to the Casbah. Wait a minute. Wait. You're wrong, Mr. Sheldon. You're thinking about Spencer Tracy. Mr. McMartin, certainly you've seen Jimmy Stewart in the movies, haven't you? I'm afraid not, Miss Smith. No, you see, I never go to the cinema. But he's not in the cinema. He's in the movies. Jimmy, what in the world are you doing on this program? What in the world? You know, I was sort of wondering the same thing about you. (laughs) Miss Smith is just slummy, Mr. Stewart. Yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, I sort of saw a sign out the theater reading, uh, It Pays to Be Ignorant, so I thought I'd come in and see how, how much it pays. <laughs> if it pays to be ignorant, I should clean up some dough around here. Tell me, have you heard this program in Hollywood, Mr. Stewart? Oh, yes, I have, and that's another reason why I stopped in. I wanted to see if, if uh, your board of experts had heads. I, I... Yes, yeah, they have, yeah. Why, how dare you, Mr. Stewart? How dare you, sir? How dare well, I'm you? I'm sorry. I Why, how dare you? Them. You padded cell, you straight jacket, you crossword puzzle, you jigsaw puzzle. Wait, what are you, what are you saying, Mr. McNaughton? I'm putting him in his place. Oh, all right. <laughs> Say, you know, I'm thinking about shipping out to Hollywood and going into pictures myself. Uh, I, what, what is that? I thought there was a law against shipping dope. Uh, oh, you're right. You're right. No, that's, no, that's all right. Mr. Howard isn't going with me. All right. Thank you. Say, Jimmy... I want to tell you that we're mighty proud of the great job you did with the Army Air Force. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Yes, yes, indeed, Jimmy. May I offer my congratulations? You know, I used to be in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I flew a Burlington Zephyr. Burlington Burlington Zephyr? That's a railroad train, isn't it? It is. Oh, no wonder I couldn't get it off the ground. Say, is it true, Mr. Stewart, that some actors in Hollywood make $5,000 a week? $5,000 a week? Yeah. Sometimes I have to work all day for that. Ah, <laughs> Well, Mr. Stewart, it's needless for me to say that we are certainly honored by this visit. And I mean that sincerely. Well, Tom, I'm serious, too, when I say that this has been my favorite program. I made up my mind that when I got here the next time to New York, I was certainly going to see it. You know, Tom, you have a lot of... A lot of fans out on the coast. So keep up the good work because we all enjoy a good laugh out there and you fellas certainly hand them out. Well, that's yeah, wonderful, yeah. Jimmy, to tell us that. It's very encouraging. Now, Jimmy, will you reach into Johnny's cap and pick out a question, a question not a question, <laughs> uh, a question for us, please? And will you read the question if you don't mind? Just take your time and read it. Six and seven eights. Six. Six and, six and seven eights. Look, I'm very sorry. That's all right, Jimmy, but it's on a slip of paper there. Just a slip of paper. Oh, I see, I see. Just read the slip of paper if you don't mind. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, how how many families live in a four-family house? (laughs) 
How many families live in a four-family house? Eight, Mr. Howard, eight. Eight, eight. How do you figure eight families in a four-family house? Well, have you heard of the housing shortage? You dumb cluck, you. Uh, please. Yeah, you said it. It used to be two cars in every garage, now two families. All right, if you want to get technical, how many families are supposed to live in a four-family house? Is that better? Much better, Mr. Howard, much better. Well, what about the answer? What about the answer? I'll bet that's even better. Uh, sure. Please. <laughs> Mr. McNaughton, if I had your brains, I'd hang myself. Couldn't and... you do a better job with the rope? Uh-uh, please. Now, get back to the question. It's about houses. Oh, I have a house in the suburbs. Suburbs? What's that? That's French for it's a long bus ride. Oh. <laughs> yes, I, I, live in a very, I live in a very old mansion. It has stood for over 200 years. Nothing has been touched or altered. Nothing has been repaired or replaced or... You must have the same landlord I have. <laughs> where, where do you live, Miss Smith? Oh, I have an apartment. Yeah, I know. Hmm? I named my apartment Charlotte Arms after my mother. That's odd. I named my apartment Venus Arms. That's silly. No. Venus doesn't have any arms. I have no apartment. <laughs> oh. oh, my word. <laughs> oh, my word, Mr. Sheldon, no apartment. No. Where, where do you live, oh, boy? Central Park South. Central Park. Central Park, what's your address? 59th Street entrance, third bench to the left. <laughs> I say, tell, tell me, uh, tell me, Miss Smith, have you a large apartment? Well, I have six rooms, counting the baths. Uh, baths don't count. Uh, I was brought up differently. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Smith. Look, I'm here, remember? We have a question. You know, my Uncle Webfoot has a beautiful house. Boy, his bath is out of this world. Isn't that rather inconvenient on a cold night? <laughs> I'm warning you, Mr. McNaughton, my patience is wearing thin. Yeah, so is your hair. Okay. <laughs> the question is, how many families normally live in a poor family house? No kidding. I wish I could find a house. Well, why don't you buy a lot out my way and build? Is it a nice neighborhood? Oh, rather. Very exclusive. Well, I hope it's a nice street. I wouldn't want to spend $300 building a house and then have someone build a cheap one right next to me. Yeah, yeah that'd be terrible. $300. Three hundred dollars? Why, a man wanted three hundred dollars just to paint one room in my house. Well, isn't that expensive? Well, he said he had to scrape the old paint off, wash with turpentine, then get ready for a new coat. So what? I do that every night before I go to bed. Uh, I say. <laughs> Ken, please, will you step in here and give our good friend, Mr. Stewart, twenty-four dollars and seventy cents for helping us out? Certainly, Tom. And there Jimmy, you are, Mr. Stewart. that I might say. <laughs> That's right, James. That's right, James. You count it be because no mistakes are rectified after you leave the mic. <laughs> and that, that is all for you. No, it's not all for me. I, I, I got to play 10% of my agent. Ah, I see. And Mr. Howard, I'd like to give Jimmy 202 Philip Morris cigarettes. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Has Harry Sawler got anything on tap for us this evening? Yes, he has, Tom. Tonight he gives us a stirring arrangement of zippity doo da. <laughs> Sunshine head my way. Sip 
zippity doo da zippity a It's the bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zippity doo da zippity a Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. In choosing your own cigarette, there's only one person whose judgment really counts. That person is you yourself. So accept this friendly challenge. Try Philip Morris and test it against the cigarette you're now smoking. Test it for taste, for flavor, for smoking pleasure. Compare critically, and you too will call for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. Philip Morris, so clean, so fresh, so pure. Always better. Better always. Thank you, Ken. And now, who is our next contestant, please? Our next contestant, Mr. Howard, is a very lovely and charming young lady. She's just about getting to the microphone now. I should like to present to you Miss Phyllis Tull. Oh, fine. Good evening, Miss Tull, and thank you a lot for coming up. How are you this evening, Miss Tull? Oh, fine, thank you. Thank you. Greetings, Miss Tull, greetings. How's your mother? Never mind, please. Will you keep quiet, Mr. McNaughton? Why, am I noisy? You're not only noisy, you're nosy. Pay no attention to him. They let him out without his nurse today, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Where are you from, would you care to tell us, Miss Tull? Yes, Los Angeles, California. Oh, Los Angeles, California. Why, that's well, I, great. I knew a girl out there once. Fine girl, had two eyebrows. Two, two eyebrows? Every girl has two eyebrows. Yeah, but not on the upper lip. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> she tickled me to death when I kissed her. Uh -huh. Mr. Sheldon, are you a lowbrow, or have you got your toupee on backwards? I haven't got a toupee. i got a sedan. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sorry for these interruptions, Miss Tull. Yes, yeah, so am I. Come over here and sit by me, Miss Tull. Never mind. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Yes. Well, you yeah, cut out, <laughs> I'm not going to speak to you again, Mr. McNaughton. Thank you. Tell me, Miss Tull, have you ever heard this program before? Oh, of course. Oh, you have? Out um, on the coast? That's right. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Then you're not surprised at what is happening here. Uh, would you like to meet Miss Smith, Miss Tull? Oh, I'd love that. Well, uh, that'll be a pleasure. Miss Smith, uh, this is Miss Tull. How do you do, Miss Tull? Go right Tull? over and very shake nice hands with Miss Smith. Me. Yeah. Very nice to know you. Yeah. How are you? Do you drink Postum? Uh-uh, please. <laughs> You know, it's very good for the nerves. Very good for the nerves. Uh, please, so, please, Miss Smith. It always makes Will me you stop. save that for Sunday night? Uh, Miss <laughs> Tull, will you reach into the cap there and pick out a question for us, if you don't mind? Just take your time and read it. Yeah. What animal does a horse doctor treat? What animal does a horse doctor treat? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, due to a shortage of time, tune in next week and find out what animal a horse doctor treats. <laughs> And thank you a lot. Give our good friend here a $25.30 for helping us out. Certainly, Mr. Howard. It's a pleasure. And I'd thank like you. to give a 202 Philip Morris cigarette. Good. <laughs> thank you. Don't go away, folks. Meanwhile, here's our ignorant baritone from Hackensack Meadows to tell you what we mean when we say... It pays to be ignorant. Here I am again, Johnny, presenting America's finest cigarette for your smoking pleasure. Yes, for all the good things you want in a cigarette, for taste, for flavor, for smoking pleasure, call for Philip Goodbye, Johnny. See you next week. Same time, same station. And remember, listen in next Sunday night when Johnny presents Crime Doctor over the same stations. Until then... Pipe smokers at ease. Take five. Take Revelation. Yes, enjoy Revelation pipe tobacco, a blend of five glorious tobaccos. Load up, light up, and take five. Take revelation. Well, folks, it wasn't really worthwhile coming back as Mr. Palazzi has just given me the high sign, which means it's high time we were closing up for this evening. But we'll be sneaking in here again next week, same time, same station. We hope you'll all sneak in with us. 
Thank you for your listening time this evening. Good night and good nonsense. This is Ken Roberts saying good night for Philip Morris with the CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KMX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles. Draft! Draft! Draft your dishes and oh, how they shine. Shine without wiping in half of the time and look bright. Right. So don't you get left, get draft. For dishes that shine even without wiping, don't get left, get draft.